Hello guys, uh, welcome back to based on African motives. Uh, still working on uh, engineering science and four working on angular motion from the question paper of November 2022. So we have got some questions that we need to consider as uh, preparations uh, for our exams, which are ahead of time. So we have got the first part of the question, which is uh, 2.1, uh, not wasting much of our time we are given. In this case, to define angular, acceleration and that is uh two marks for that okay remember that uh angular acceleration from our formula uh which is given uh as omega over t it simply means that there is a that is the change in uh that is the change in velocity but here we are referring to the angular velocity in this case so from this formula we can just give our uh, our definition as uh is the rate, so you can just have this as the rate of change. That is the rate of change of angular. That is the rate of change of angular velocity in this case. Remember that rate of change simply means uh, if at this given time, what is the change in angular velocity per a given time? That is uh, uh, the time frame for 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 that change that is happening so always just like velocity over time we have got uh, acceleration from there simply the rate of change of velocity gives us acceleration the rate of change of displacement gives us velocity so whenever you are dividing with time it's rate of change all right uh so that is uh your definition in this case 2.2 we are now given uh, a vehicle, oh, sorry, a wheel of a truck has a diameter of 100 centimeters in this case, and it accelerates from 6 rad per second to 14 rad per second. So take note when you are given the information, all right? So uh, let's just take our information. We are given the diameter of 100 centimeters, which we can convert to meters as one meter. Remember, one meter is, one, is 100 centimeters. So it accelerates from... This is the, 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 the velocity, the angular velocity that we are given. So it accelerated from a velocity of, which is our initial angular velocity of 6 rad per second, to a final velocity, which is our omega 2 of 14 rad per second. So this, it, this part that you're given is the angular velocity. The one that we said the change in that angular velocity gives us angular acceleration. All right. So we are given in 13 seconds. So that is the time frame. The time frame from the beginning, it was 13 seconds. All right. So the first part of the question is to calculate uh, 2.21, the angular acceleration of the wheel. The angular acceleration, the one that we defined here as the change in uh, velocity, that is our angular velocity. So that means we already have the formula from there. So in this case, we are going to have this as, uh, so this is 2.21. So angular acceleration is simply the change in the angular velocity, which is omega 2 minus omega 1 over the given time. So this is going to give us our angular acceleration. Omega 2, which is 14 rad per second, minus omega 1, which is 6 rad per second, everything over the time in seconds. So take note, your time is supposed to be in seconds. So this is going to give us the angular acceleration, which is measured in rad per square second. So this is going to give us uh, 0 0.6. 15384 and so forth. So this is going to be 15 in rad per square second. All right. So we've got angular acceleration in this case. Uh then we are given the angular displacement of the wheel in ra in radians. All right. So the angular displacement is simply theta. So that is a uh, 2.22. So you have to calculate theta in this case. So what you need is that from the information that you're given, uh, we have to take the uh, appropriate formula. When I'm saying the appropriate formula is that there are so many formulas that you can actually have. So in this case, let me show you some of the formulas that you're given uh, from your formula sheet in this case. All right, so these are the formulas that you're given. So it depends with the information that you have, where there is theta, 
we can see that there are these formulas where there is theta here, uh, omega being theta over time, theta being equivalent to omega two plus omega one over two times time. Uh, also here, we have got uh, theta here. So depending with the information, actually this formula can work. Uh, and also this formula can work from the information that we have. So it depends with the information that you're given. Also, you can try also to manipulate whatever that you're given here to see if you can find your theta from there. All right, so with these formulas that we are given, uh, uh, I've got the first part that I'm going to use, this one, uh, where we are given that theta is equivalent to omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2 everything times the time that we are given. So this can actually work because we have got, uh, uh, remember, we have got our initial and our final values in this case for velocity, that is omega one, omega two, and the time. So that is going to be six plus 14 uh, times the time of, of 13 seconds. So that is going to give us theta. So theta is going to be omega one, this is six plus 14 over two everything times the time. Remember, our time is given as 13 seconds. So this is going to give us theta in radians. Uh, that is going to be 130 uh, rad in this case, in radians. So take note, your theta is in radians in this case. All right. Another part that we saw from the formulas is that we can actually obtain this same angle, uh, this same displacement, angular displacement, which is theta, from the formula, which was given as omega 1 t plus half alpha t squared, or like this. All right. Whereby now this part is not going to give us exactly 130. Why? Because we calculated alpha, and this is a rounded off value. So our answer is going to be approximately equal to 130, but not exactly 30. 130, because this one is from original values. So this is the exact answer that you're supposed to have. But any other answer can be uh, can be marked because you are calculating that answer from another value that you rounded off before. So it's not going to give us exactly what we expect, guys. All right. So that's omega 1 in this case. Remember that omega 1 is equivalent to 6 rad per second. So we're going to have this as omega 1 times time. So our theta is omega 1, which is a 6 times time. Remember, our time was 13. So that's going to be 13 plus half times uh, alpha, which is our angular acceleration that we got before. That was 0 0.615 squared times the time squared, which is our time is 13. So this is going to give us 13 squared. All right. So that's going to give us our theta, which is the angular displacement. So this one is going to give us uh, 129,968. Uh, uh, if you round off to three decimal places, it's going to be 968, right? All right. So like I said, it depends with the formula that you're going to use. And the formula that you're using, some because you're using rounded off figures, so it is not going to give us exactly 130, but you can see that 129,9 is actually approximately to that. Also, someone could have used the theta, which is equivalent to uh, omega 2 squared minus omega 1 squared over 2 alpha, or like that. Okay, so many, so many ways, guys, of obtaining these answers. All right, so that's it. Uh, from this part, we are given that is uh, actually 2.22. Uh, having two marks, two marks, so that is going to be four marks, everything. Okay, 2.3, we are given the effective diameter of a motor car wheel is 600 millimeters. So there we are given the diameter of the motor car, which is 600 um millimeters in this case all right so that is our diameter 600 uh millimeters okay we do not know what we are going to have later on but we know that this is best for us to convert even to meters the basic unit of measurement which is meters so dividing by 1000 this is going to give us 0 0.6 meters all right so the motor car is traveling at 120 kilometers per hour that is the velocity of the car or at 120 kilometers per hour, which we can also convert to meters per second. Remember that in a meter per second, we have got 3,6 uh, kilometers per hour. So we can simply divide to convert 120 kilometers per hour. We can simply divide 120 uh, divided to 
3,6 in this case. So if we divide 120 divided by 3,6, uh, 120 divided by 3,6, it is going to give us something like 100 over 3. So you have to be very, very careful. Which value are you going to use? Are you going to use the 100 over 3? Or you're going to use the decimal part, which is going to be 33,333 uh, meters per second. So if you use this, it is going to affect our answers a little bit. Uh, also, the 33,333 is going to affect our answer a little bit. So uh, they will mark because this is what you've chosen to, to use decimal or to use a fraction. Okay, so that is the first part that you're given from the information. Now the question on 2.31 was to calculate the angular velocity of the uh, of a point on the thread of the tire, the angular velocity. All right. How can we have the angular velocity from this information? How can we obtain angular velocity? Okay, so this is an uh, application of conversion from the given, uh, remember angular velocity is omega. So it's a conversion that is going to take place from the velocity because we've got the velocity in meters per second and we have got the diameter where we can calculate the radius from there. Remember that these two can be converted. You can, can convert from a linear uh, motion, which is a linear velocity, to angular velocity using which formula? The formula that you're going to use is also given in your formula sheet that the relationship between this is V is equal to R omega like this. That is linear velocity, angular velocity. So in order for us to have the angular velocity, which is omega in this case, we can divide by the radius divide by radius. So this cancels. That means our omega is equivalent to the velocity over the radius. So we have the velocity in meters per second. We have to calculate the radius. We do not have this radius. So knowing that radius is simply taken from the diameter. So radius is diameter over 2. So that's 0 0,6 over 2, which is uh, 0 0,3 in meters. All right. So we have the radius in this case. So that means we can calculate our omega. So omega, that's velocity, which I said it is going to depend with the value that you're going to use. Are you going to use the 100 over 3 or you're going to use the 33,333 and, so and so forth? So in this case, I'm going to use the 33,333 like this. Over the radius, we got our radius, which is 0, 0,3. Okay, so if I divide this, I'm going to obtain omega. Remember, omega is in measured in rad per second. We saw this previously. So this is going to be 111, 111, and so on in rad per in rad per second. All right. So that is what you're going to obtain. Omega, which is the angular velocity in rad per second. All right, so uh, you have to be very, very careful for that given information. Then the other part now we are given that, calculate the angular retardation. So when they are uh, talk about a retardation, it's a deceleration. So they are saying calculate the angular deceleration in this case. If the motor car is brought to rest, from which speed, from the speed of 120 kilometers per hour, which is this one that we converted the 120 kilometers per hour, the one that we converted to uh, the angular velocity, which is now 111 uh, rad per second. Why am I focusing with the, the speed that is measured in rad per second? Because here we are given that it is now brought to rest. We are now given to calculate the angular rate angular take note what we are calculating here is angular deceleration not just deceleration which means it's not linear acceleration we are not calculating a in this case we are calculating alpha which is the angular uh, acceleration that is representing the angular deceleration which is the angular retardation in the time frame of 25 seconds so that is why we have to convert these two, uh, or we have to work with the one that we converted to, to rad per second. All right, so let's take our information that is important for this question. So remember, we converted this from this speed. Remember, we are told from a speed of 120 kilometers from this speed, it was now brought to rest 
chrome that is our initial velocity our initial angular velocity so our initial angular velocity which is the one that we converted to rad per second omega one is going to be 111 so we've got 111 comma one one uh rad per second and it was brought to rest so that is our final angular velocity which is zero rad per second at rest there is no movement so the velocity there is zero in the time frame we are given the time that uh took this it took this in uh 25 seconds so this is our time frame which is 25 seconds so from this information we are asked to calculate the angular uh retardation which is our alpha in this case remember we said alpha is simply the change in angular velocity so if alpha is the change in angular velocity that means our alpha is going to be omega 2 minus omega 1 over the given time so that means we are going to obtain our angular retardation omega 2 which is 0 minus omega 1 which is 1 1 comma 1 1 everything over the time of 25 seconds so this answer is going to be measured in rad per square second remembering that it's a retardation so we are going to obtain a negative in this case, negative four comma four, four, four rad per square second like that. All right. So that is uh, what we are given in this case, 2.32 to calculate the angular rate addition. So what was important is that the speed of 100 from that is our initial velocity from. So the initial velocity was 120 kilometers hour but it is the one that we converted to rad per second so we are supposed to use the one in rad per second not the 120 this is under linear this is the under angular so we have to use the one that is under uh angular in this case that is the angular uh velocity all right so that was our question 2.2 uh 2.32 now we move on to question 2.4. So let me just remove this part here. So 2.4, which was the last part of our question 2, was to calculate um, the accelerating torque in this case. Okay, accelerating torque from which part? From the diameter that we are given a wheel has got a diameter of 0 0.6 meters, having an angular acceleration of, which is our alpha, that's 37,704 meter, uh, rather is right per square second, sorry. That is angular acceleration right per square second. And we are given the moment of initia of four units. So the moment of initia is given as uh, four units in this case. Calculate the accelerating torque. Okay, so in this case, uh, for you to obtain the torque from this, uh we have got the best formula that's uh 2.4 so the accelerating torque is equivalent to the moment of initial times the angular acceleration so that is the moment of initial of four times the angular acceleration of 37 comma 704 so that is what you need in this case the diameter is not even important these two the product of these two gives us the torque so that is what you have so that is uh going to be 150 comma 816 uh remember torque measured in newton meter so that is going to be newton meter in this case all right so that's two marks for that uh to calculate the accelerating torque from the information uh having a total of 12 marks in everything so these are the typical questions that you are going to be asked and you need to be very, very careful whenever you're answering these typical questions on angular motion. For now, that's what we had, guys, from uh, Maison African Motives. Till we meet again.